What you guys got another video here for you. Your Windows is not secure until you do this. Most people that use Windows Defender think that they are making it ultra secure by going into this settings panel right here and changing a lot of the settings inside here. But what if I told you Windows Defender has tons of settings that are hidden from you and you won't be able to enable these unless you are using Group Policy Editor or you're using PowerShell to enable these features. So in this video, I'll show you the critical Windows security settings you must enable to protect your PC from malware, ransomware, and modern attacks. These are hidden or ignored tweaks that dramatically harden Windows Defender and lock down Windows 11 without installing any third-party antivirus program. It's important that you enable all of the ransomware features on Windows Defender because this can help against ransomware attack and it's best to enable these particular types of features. There's quite a few features in here that people always advise you to disable and these people know nothing about security and it's important that you keep all of the security features enabled, especially uh, memory integrity. People will tell you to disable this because of FPS. It does impact it a little bit, but it's important that you keep it enabled if you're using Windows Defender to block malware attacks every single day that is attacking Windows. This can keep you safe. You'll take a small impact on FPS, but it's worth keeping it enabled. Now we're going to take a look at ASR, which is supported for Windows Defender. It's called Attack Surface Reduction Rules. And Microsoft have an article which is quite in depth. And I'll leave a link for it in the video description if you want to go through that and spend literally hours trying to work out what it actually does. ASR rule names are listed right here and it will tell you exactly what they do. And it's pretty self-explanatory. But be careful before you start enabling some of these and blocking things because you might run into difficulties. I tend to use the audit rule if I'm going to be setting this up for a client and that way I know they will be prompted with a box. It will be blocked and it will be prompted to say, do you want to enable this feature or allow it to run on the system? And you get a choice. So it will be down to user error as always with malware infections. People click on things and then they get infected. So these rules are essential. You can see ASR rule modes here and it tells you exactly what they are. So zero is disabled, one is blocked, audit is two, and warn is six. So you can read all this information yourself. Now, this guy here has done a magnificent job on his website where you can use uh, this particular script that will run and make these changes for you. And I'll show you that in a second. He has a GitHub page and he also has a normal page which you can go to as well. Now the information provided in this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only. Any actions you take based on this video are strictly at your own risk and decision. I'm not responsible for any loss or damages to your data. So once you understand all of that and you want to read this guy's website, this is his website right here. He does have an in-depth video which I would advise you to go and watch as well because he goes into more detail and again, give him a sub while you're over there. Now, looking at the attack surface configurator, which is what he's created, he's made quite a few of these on his website and they're quite useful. But here, you can just enable all the rules to block all of the items that you see on the list. I'd advise you to go through this yourself manually rather than just enabling all rules because there may be something inside there that you use on a daily basis on your computer. Everyone uses their computer differently. So it's important that you click on these individually and set them up how you like for your computer. You can see right here, there's enable and a disable. And then there's the mode, which is block, audit or warn. So you can choose what you want for your PC. I'm not telling you what to do because everyone uses their PC differently. So mode would be warn, audit and block and also disable or enable. Obviously you're going to enable it because you want to enable this feature. If I audit it, it will go orange. That means it's sort of amber or orange, which will tell us that we're not 
sort of at the strictest rule. Disable will be gray. And if I go to uh, block here, it will go red, which means it is a severe change. We are making a rule to say we want to block this policy. And this will block abuse of exploited vulnerable signed drivers. So whether you want to set this as block or audit, it's entirely up to you or even warn, it's up to you how you want to set yours. I would have this set to probably audit mode and give you a choice. And again, you can see here Adobe Reader for creating child processes. You can basically uh, audit that one or block it. It's entirely up to you how you set yours up. Everyone has going to have different needs for different features on their computer that they use or don't use. Now, a lot of this stuff is going to be uh, to block malicious content. So I'd advise you to go through the whole list. You've also got exclusions here. So if you want to exclude a location, you can type that in that box right there and say you want to exclude a temporary area or something like that. You can do. Now, of course, you can go through here yourself and read what it says. It's basically blocking all office applications from creating child processes. And of course, some of these are pretty malicious here. As you can see, block executable content from email clients. If you don't receive any executable files through email, I would advise you putting that on block. But if you do receive uh, executable files in work through your email and you need them, then don't put it to block. Otherwise, you won't receive them. It's that simple. So just go through and read everything as you can see here. And if you don't understand, err on the side of caution and put it to audit mode. Now, there's quite a few here that I would block myself uh, instantly because obviously some of these are going to be obviously malicious for me on my computer. I don't use JavaScript on this system and I don't do VB script. So I would probably put these to block. But if you do work with this sort of stuff on a regular basis, then don't block it because you're going to end up with issues. So you might want to put that to audit mode. And I don't know whether that's going to affect, uh, you know, Minecraft and stuff, because that does use the Java-based version. So if you are going to do that, then don't uh, block JavaScript, otherwise it might not work. So you just have to uh, read through and obviously use a bit of common sense here. But a lot of malware does use JavaScript, and a lot of malware does use VB script as well. And a lot of malware does use a lot of these particular uh, exploits here that people can block here. So that's what I'd advise you to go through and take a good, strong look at. We've got one here blocking reboot machine in safe mode. Again, I'm going to put that on uh, audit mode. But there is stuff here that you might want to uh, leave as block, like this one here use advanced protection against ransomware. We definitely want to put that on block because we want to block ransomware. So from here, again, and you can see calls for office macros here. We're definitely putting that on block because I don't use that on this system. And block untrusted unsigned processes that run from a USB flash drive. Now, if you've got uh, unassigned processes that run off of USB flash drive, i.e. maybe portable apps or something like that that are unsigned, then I wouldn't check mark that to block because otherwise it would block it. Whereas you can put it into audit mode and it will ask you, do you want to allow this to run? Okay, so we're going through here and taking a closer look at some of these. Uh, because these are normally malware related, people will normally put these on block. I'm going to leave these on audit mode right here. Block office communication applications from creating child processes. Again, you can go through here and block this stuff. If you don't do any of this sort of stuff inside office, I would advise you to leave it on blocked. That's entirely up to you how you set your PC up because obviously everyone is different. Remember, one size doesn't fit all, so we just need to configure this to ourselves. So here, we're going to just do this last one right here. And once we do this, I'm just going to go down the bottom and generate code or a command, and it will give us the uh, code that we can paste into a PowerShell window or terminal, and it will then put these settings onto the PC. So here it is right here. And this is our custom one because we created a custom one. If you want to uh, block all of them, then you obviously you can set that up how you want by just enabling all and it will block everything. That's entirely up to you. So let's go ahead and highlight this 
and we're going to take this over to PowerShell. I've opened up the PowerShell window as admin and just run this and enter it. And we've set these preferences. That's what we've done. That's what the command's doing. It's setting a bunch of these uh, preferences here, which are all listed on the Microsoft website if you want to read all through that, if you don't trust uh, this person that is putting this information out there for you. You can go and do your own research, but he's done a lot of this for you and he's listed it all on his site in a more cleaner, clearer way, which is much more user friendly to a lot of people. And you can see when we put in this, uh, get our preferences right here, we can see there's a whole list of stuff that we've made changes to on our system and it will give us all of these and all these can be changed as well individually if you wanted to. Uh, but let's go back to his website right here. And there's also one here which is set up for group policy uh, object generator. It's the same thing if you want to use the group policy editor. If you're on a Windows 11 or Windows 10 Pro Edition PC or higher, you can use the group policy if you don't want to set this up uh, via the way I just showed you. You can go through and do the same thing. It's slightly different because obviously these are for group policy settings. So you'd go into here and you would obviously set these to either audit or block or whatever way you want to configure yours. I'm not going to go through all of this because we've just been through all of this previously. So you just go through here and set it up the way you like. And once you've got it all set up, it's going to give you again another script which you can run on your system and it will generate a PowerShell script right here. You can copy all this and then paste it in and it's going to make those changes as you can see right here. So that's how you can set yours up. I'm not going to run this again because I've already done it. So that's basically how you can set it up. You just highlight this and run it on the system. Okay, so let's go over to Group Policy Editor because I did say to you that this can be done manually inside Group Policy and you'll see how difficult it is to set this up manually because you have to put these in one by one. So type GP Edit or GPO in the search box and this will open up the Group Policy Editor on Windows Pro Editions or above. You want to go to Computer Configuration and Windows Components here. And then here we'll go into Windows Defender in a second. But you can see there's settings here which you can set uh, to tighten up the security on your system. If you want to tamper with the Windows PowerShell uh, script execution settings here, they're there on Windows 11 to protect you. I've got this set to allow all scripts. But if you wanted to uh, tighten this up this would be set to off and you won't be able to run scripts on that system it will block them so you'd have to go in here or you can do a command inside PowerShell to allow scripts to run but I've had this set to either only sign scripts or you can set it to remote scripts or you can set it to completely off and it will block them and you would have to put in the command manually to run that script and then you disable it again to make sure scripts can't run on that system because it's important, like I told you before, people create scripts and they put them up online and there could be some malicious code in there and you should never run scripts on your PC without any sort of understanding of what it's doing. So now we're going to look inside Microsoft Defender Antivirus and then Microsoft Defender Exploit Guard and inside here you can see it right there, Attack uh, Surface Reduction. And inside here you would obviously go into the Configure Settings and this is what that script would be configuring inside the system you'd be coming into here manually clicking enable and you would then see a blank spot like this and you put the value name and the value on his website you can see the name and the value right there so you would obviously copy the name and obviously you would then go back and copy the value and put that here now these are all listed on microsoft's website as well so you can cross reference them and check and customize it the way you like. If you want to do it in the group policy editor, you would just do exactly what I've showed you right there. I'm not going to go through all of that in this video, but if you want to see a separate video on that, let me know in the comment section down below. B does have a full essentials list right here, which will explain everything in layman's terms. It's really easy to understand. You can break it all down here and it will tell you about creating exclusions, the type of exclusions, and it will talk about the commands that you're going to be using, like the command line parameters for ASR. And it gives it all in plain English and you'll be able to understand. Just spend a bit of time understanding it. Now, if you don't understand what you're doing, then probably leave it alone and just leave your PC as is. For the advanced users, you can go in and even do some ASR 
atomic testing here. There's some code here which you can use to be able to test all the settings that we've done, but that is for another video. Anyway, with that said, I think that's going to be about it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section down below. My name has been Brian from brightechcomputers.co.uk. Just want to say a quick shout out to all my members who have joined my YouTube members group. I appreciate the support and I shall catch you in the next video. Bye for now. <music>